Hey guys, I'm James from Zen Systems, and today we're going to take a look at the chat feature in the 3CX web client application. So let's jump in. So, to use chat in the 3CX web client, you're going to go three steps down to the chat menu on the left hand side. As you can see at the moment, there are no active chats with anybody. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to very quickly just tap this button here and it asks me to select chat participants. So I'm going to type in William Brown, if I could type, there we are. And I'm going to initiate a chat with William Brown by clicking OK. So immediately I've got a window on the right hand side here where I can say, Hello, William, and hit enter. So that instantly records that as a chat message to William. William's going to get a notification and send a message back saying, Hi, John. And you can see that the web client actually shows that William is typing. And there you go, William's response. On a very base level, that's how to use chat. Now, there are a couple of options whilst in a conversation with somebody. So if you tap this arrow on the left, on the right hand side here, you can archive that chat. So if you no longer want to keep your message history visible with William, you can archive it or you can actually delete that chat. Uh, there is also an archive button on the right hand side over here, which if you tap, will just archive that message. Now, in the text entry bar down here where it says say something you've got the choice to click on an emoji so here we've got a whole bunch of what 3cx call smileys and people and these are categorized so you can see as i scroll down the category changes at the top here so we're into food and drink and we've got activities travel and places objects symbols flags and that's about it pretty familiar for anyone that's ever used a mobile phone. And on the top of the list of chats that you might have, sort of the chat activity screen, uh, you'll see these three dots. And if you click on the three dots, you can then view archived chats. And you can see here that uh, I had a previous chat here that was archived. So if I go back to the William Brown one and I tap the archive button, disappears from my active chats window and then if I click on archived you'll see that that William Brown chat is still there as is the one from yesterday. So again pretty simple stuff at the moment now it's sort of important to say that you can obviously add more than one chat participant so if I do William Brown and add in another one uh, 200 oh, Betty come on Betty let's have a chat I'm just gonna hit the next button I can create a name for the chat. So it could be a conversation about something specific or it could be a group um, within a business. So we'll call this accounts chat and we'll click OK. So you can see here now that we've got a group chat here. So it's an accounts chat and it has two participants. If I click on those, it'll show me who those chat participants are. Again, the archive button remains on the right hand side. And as you can see here, I can still view archived. So. Let's say hello to the group. Hello all. And you can see that once I've initiated that conversation, it comes up in my active chats window here. And William's going to reply and say hello again. And you'll see that pops up there. So as far as chat goes, it's it's not a uh, an uncommon setup, but there are some other things you can do with chat in 3CX. So I'm going to quickly show you that now. So 3CX has the ability to add chat to WordPress. So if you have a WordPress website, you can actually create a queue or a direct chat link with a specific user, and you can embed that onto your website. If I show you very quickly here, this is our homepage for our website. And you can see on the bottom right hand side here, we've got this blue icon. And if I tap that, it then goes into a 3CX live chat and talk. Now, you'll notice that at the top here, it says no agents are available at the moment. Please complete the form below and we will get back to you shortly. So in this case, you can put in your name, email address, telephone number, and a quick message and then hit submit. In order for that to become an active live chat, we would need to log people or make sure people are logged into this specific queue that I've got attached to this chat. 
So I'm going to quickly pop over to the switchboard. And if you're not familiar with the switchboard, we have got a separate video on a switchboard overview, which will go through the basics of that. But right now we're going to jump into the switchboard and I'm going to go to the queue on the left hand side that I am a queue manager for. And you can see here that all of the agents in this queue, the homepage chat queue, are currently logged out. So I'm going to log myself in. Once I've logged in and we go back to the website and the chat, when I click that button there, you can see that this has now changed and I am having a conversation. So I'm going to go, hello, it says, hello, how can I help you? Um, I'd like some information on 3CX. That would help if I could type. Please. Enter. The reason it says Joe Blogs is because I have previously set my username in 3CX chat as Joe Blogs. So the system will remember you as a as a user. So let's pop back into chat and you can see here on the 3CX web client that even though I'm not in the chat window, I've got a pop-up window here that says Joe Blogs. I'd like some information on 3CX, please. Now I can either ignore it or I can reply to it. I can minimize it and leave it there. So if we just jump into chat, you'll see that this has now got a, a one here to tell me that there's a, a one live unread message. And if I click on that, I can very quickly uh, suggest um, how would a quick call work for you now? So I've just sent that back to the person on our website saying, how would a quick call work for you now? And if I pop over to here, you can see here that someone from the homepage chat group has come back and said, how would a quick call work for you now? So I'm going to change the scenario slightly and I'm going to go back to the homepage chat and I am going to create more people in the queue. And I am going to go back to chat and I am going to quickly close that down which says your session is over, please feel free to contact us again. So we'll close that window. You can see down here, if I click this button again, we have a new chat and I'm gonna say, hi, could you please assist me? Enter. Now, you can see here that I've got a notification that says that original chat session was closed. So I'm gonna ignore that one. And then I've got here a new message that says, hi, could you please assist me? Now, I'm just gonna minimize that for a second. You can see here that there are five participants in this, in this queue. And currently, any of those five members could be answering this query. So I've got the choice. I can either start answering or I can actually signify to the other people within this queue that I'm going to take this chat over because I'm going to handle the conversation. So if I tap that, this now becomes a conversation between just myself and the user, Joe Blogs. You'll see on the other one that this was a one-to-one -one chat anyway because there was nobody else logged into that queue. So if we just head back to this chat that was initiated by... Joe blogs over here from the website, you'll see that Joe typed, hi, could you please assist me? And in response, because I've taken over the chat here, I could say, yes, certainly. Would a call work for you? And Joe responds, yes, that would be great. So my advice to Joe would be, please press the green telephone icon at the top right of your screen. So you can see here that there's a green telephone icon just here. And if I press that, or if Joe presses that, should I say, that is now going to ring my extension. So it's coming from a, a queue number there. Um, and you can see that the person ringing has been identified as Joe Blogs followed by an email address. So you can see there that it was a, a really simple elevate from chat to call. And in actual fact, you can also um, switch that if the person's browser supports it and they have a web camera, you could in fact switch that to a video call.
Now, lastly, up here, I just wanted to show you that I can transfer this chat to somebody else. So if, let's say, for example, I'm, I don't know, I finished my shift or somebody else is taking over, I'm going to hit the transfer button and I am going to type 202 for William Brown. That has now been transferred to William Brown and William will get a notification that this chat uh, from Joe Bloggs has been transferred to him. And there you have it. Thanks so much for taking some time to watch the video with us today. We love putting them together and it's really important that we're putting valuable content together for our customers. So if you want to see any other videos, subscribe. If you've got any ideas of other videos that we can do for you, stick them in the comments below.